This video is dedicated to teaching new operators how to properly change lift truck batteries. Besides procedure, we'll also focus on some basic safety practices that should be followed while changing and charging lift truck batteries. Please remember, however, that your company may have safety procedures other than those discussed in this video. First, let's look specifically at your MTC Power Changer brand battery changer. This two compartment changer has been designed to remove and replace industrial lift truck batteries in a variety of forklifts, from stand-ups to counterbalance and pallet trucks. The two compartment design allows for quick battery changes. The battery changer is equipped with powered roller conveyors. These conveyors help move batteries in and out of the machine's battery compartments. Next, your battery changer is equipped with a hydraulic rotary actuator that smoothly rotates the T-arm assembly from one battery compartment to the next. A vacuum cup at each end of the T-arm assembly allows the battery changer to attach to and pull lift truck batteries from their individual compartments. The T-arm assembly uses a rack and pinion system and a hydraulic orbit motor to slide along the steel shaft in the center of the carriage. The changer is equipped with either a rack and pinion system for our PCE model or hydraulic cylinders for raising and lowering the carriage assembly on the PCH model. The operator console holds all the controls you will use to operate the power changer. Let's begin by going over the controls. The left bi-directional joystick, or travel joystick, controls the forward and reverse movement of the battery changer. Pushing this joystick forward causes the changer to travel forward. Pulling this joystick backward causes the changer to travel in reverse. The right bi-directional joystick, or carriage joystick, controls the up and down movement of the battery changer carriage. Pulling this joystick backward causes the battery changer carriage to rise. Pushing this joystick forward causes the battery changer carriage to lower. This large joystick in the center of the panel, the vacuum arm joystick, is a multi-function device that allows you to move the T-arm assembly of the battery changer in eight different ways. Pushing this joystick forward causes the T-arm assembly to move to the far compartment. Pulling this joystick backward causes the T-arm assembly to move to the near compartment. Moving the joystick to the left will slide the T-arm assembly to the left, and moving it to the right will slide the T-arm assembly to the right. By moving this joystick in between the four standard directions of up, down, left, and right, you will be able to both rotate and slide the T-arm assembly with one motion. For example, moving the joystick up and to the right will rotate the T-arm forward as well as slide it to the right. The two buttons on top of the vacuum arm joystick control left and right vacuum suction. Pressing the right button will activate suction in the right vacuum cup. Pressing the left button will activate suction in the left vacuum cup. When suction is activated on one side, pressure is created on the opposite side. The vacuum gauge on the control panel indicates the amount of vacuum in inches of mercury generated by the vacuum system of the battery changer. When a vacuum cup is attached to the side of a battery, the vacuum gauge should read approximately 20 inches of mercury. When a vacuum cup is not attached to the side of a battery, the gauge should be resting at approximately 4 inches of mercury. If your power changer is equipped with an optional hydraulic extension arm, 
for accessing batteries over wide outriggers, the trigger finger button on the large joystick will control its operation. To operate the extension arm, simply pull the trigger, hold it, and move the joystick to the left or the right, depending upon which side the T-arm extension is mounted. To retract the extension arm, again pull the trigger, hold it, and slide the joystick in the opposite direction. This small joystick controls the conveyor roller beds. If you want the conveyor rollers in the far battery compartment to move to the right, you push the joystick forward and to the right. To operate the near compartment rollers, pull the joystick backward and move it left or right. The red button on top of this joystick acts as an override button for the vacuum arm safety lockout system. We will discuss this feature in more detail in a few moments. The hour meter on the control panel indicates the total number of hours that the battery changer has been in service since it was built. This meter will help you determine when the battery changer should be serviced. Refer to the maintenance section of your owner's manual for more information. Pressing this button activates the battery changer's horn. The master and travel reset buttons are only used on the PCE series power changers. These buttons are used to reset the overload and travel protection circuits. The master reset button lights if the lift inverter is tripped. Pushing the master reset button resets the lift inverter. When this button lights, something is usually wrong with the system. Do not reset the lift inverter until you have asked for assistance from your maintenance personnel. The travel reset button lights if the travel inverter is tripped. Pushing the travel reset button resets the travel inverter. When this button lights, something is usually wrong with the system. Do not reset the lift inverter until you have asked for assistance from your maintenance personnel. The red start-stop button, located in the upper right-hand corner of the control panel, turns the unit on and off. To activate your battery changer's controls, you must first stand on the operator platform, close and latch the operator's gate, and then pull up on the red start-stop button. When you want to turn off the battery changer, simply push down on the button. To prevent equipment damage, your power changer will not travel forward or reverse if the T-arm assembly is outside the battery carriage. However, in some situations, you may find it necessary to move the battery changer from its current position while the T-arm assembly is outside the carriage. When this situation occurs, you can press and hold the override button located on top of the small joystick. This will allow the changer to move forward or backward, or up or down, by using the appropriate bi-directional joystick. You must be very careful when doing this in order to prevent damaging the T-arm assembly or surrounding equipment. In most instances, you will want to move the T-arm back into the battery changer carriage before changing the battery changer's position. One very important safety feature is the dead man operator platform. This platform is equipped with two limit switches that prevent activation of the machine unless an operator is standing on the platform. Another important safety feature is the PLC Control Battery Safety Lockout System. This system prevents a battery from accidentally being discharged from the carriage. When a battery breaks one of the retro reflective beams at the edge of a battery compartment, the carriage rollers stop functioning. Only by pressing and releasing the stop lock override button can the operator continue moving the battery out of the battery changer carriage. The override button is the center push button on the right side of the operator console. If motion is stopped, 
when offloading a battery, the override button must be depressed again. Properly aligning the lift truck with the power changer is critical when beginning the battery changing process. In most facilities, aligning your truck with a battery changer will involve driving the truck to a designated truck service area and aligning its battery compartment with a painted line or steel rail on the floor. When aligned, the truck should be no more than one inch or one and one half inches from the line or rail. Once the lift truck is properly aligned, you should completely shut down its power systems as specified by the lift truck manufacturer. Next, unplug the lift truck's battery cable and place it carefully on top of the battery. This will help ensure that the battery cable is not damaged during the battery handling process. Next, remove the lift truck's battery retaining device and place it near the operator compartment of the lift truck. This will help you remember to reinstall the plate after the battery has been changed. The first step in operating the power changer is to ensure that the battery changer aisle is clear of debris. Once this has been done, board the operator platform. Start the battery changer by pulling up on the red start-stop button on the operator's control panel. Using the travel joystick, move the battery changer toward the lift truck until one of the battery changer's compartments is aligned with the lift truck's battery compartment. The vacuum cup can be used as a reference for the center of the carriage compartment to assist with alignment to the lift truck compartment by moving the vacuum cup close to the edge of the carriage compartment. To position the changer, Simply move forward or reverse by grabbing the head of the travel joystick, lifting gently on the joystick lock, and moving the joystick in the direction of travel. The travel speed of the power changer can be controlled by how far the joystick is moved in either direction. A slight movement yields a slower speed, while full speed is achieved with a full forward movement. The power changer may coast before coming to a stop. The amount of coast is dependent upon the weight of the batteries on the changer and on the travel speed. Allow for this coast when judging the stopping distance. Now, move the power changer so that the empty compartment is aligned with the battery in the lift truck. Next, adjust the height of the roller bed so that the rollers in the carriage are slightly lower than the bottom of the battery in the lift truck. To adjust the height of the carriage, Grab the up-down joystick and lift the travel lock as before and move the joystick in the desired direction to raise or lower the carriage as necessary. When removing a battery from the lift truck, have the carriage rollers slightly below the bottom of the battery. Using the vacuum arm joystick in the center of the control panel, move the T-arm assembly into the appropriate battery changer compartment. Keeping your hand on the joystick, slide the T-arm assembly toward the lift truck battery until the vacuum cup is touching the side of the battery. Be sure that the cup is completely on the battery. Next, activate vacuum suction by pressing and releasing the appropriate button on top of the vacuum arm joystick. For example, if the battery is located on the right side of the T-arm, you should press and release the right button to activate suction in the right vacuum cup. With vacuum suction activated, slide the T-arm and attach the vacuum cup to the side of the battery. Using the joystick, pull the battery as far as possible into the battery changer carriage. Generally, the battery should be pulled to the halfway point on the battery carriage. Be careful not to hit obstructions on the opposite side of the changer. Now, release the vacuum cup from the side of the battery by activating suction in the vacuum cup on the other side of the T-arm assembly and back the vacuum cup slightly away from the battery. Now, raise the T-arm assembly to its vertical position by pulling the joystick back 
and releasing the joystick when the arm is in the desired position. Then, use the conveyor roller joystick to move the entire battery to the center of the battery compartment by moving the joystick in the direction of travel and releasing the joystick when the battery is in the desired position. Now that the battery is in position on the power changer, simply move the changer forward into the racks using the joysticks for forward reverse travel and up-down movement as described before. Move the power changer so that the empty compartment is aligned with the battery you have selected to be removed from the rack. When approaching the height of the second level of batteries in the racks, the operator platform will begin to rise with the carriage. This will allow the operator to have access to the charger connectors at each level and maintain the operator's viewpoint with regard to the battery and compartments of the changer and the racks. To remove a battery from a rack, move the power changer forward or backward and then up if necessary to align with a battery that is charged, cooled, and ready for use. If the battery is still connected to the charger connector, the operator should pull forward to disconnect the battery's cable from the plug mount. Place the cable securely on top of the battery. The battery is removed from the rack in the same manner and sequence as described for removing the battery from the lift truck. As before, using the center joystick, raise the T-arm assembly to its vertical position. Then, using the conveyor roller joystick, move the battery to the center of the battery changer compartment. To place a battery into an empty rack slot, you must first align the battery changer compartment containing the battery with the selected empty slot. Next, you will need to raise the carriage of the battery changer so that it is approximately slightly higher than the lead-in rollers in the rack slot. Then, using the conveyor roller joystick, move the battery approximately six inches into the battery rack compartment. Use the carriage joystick to lower the carriage of the battery changer so that the battery is resting on the rollers inside the rack slot. Then, using the conveyor roller joystick, move the battery as far as possible into the rack slot. Next, use the vacuum arm joystick to move the T-arm assembly into the battery changer compartment containing the battery. Keeping your hand on the joystick, Slide the T-arm assembly toward the battery until the vacuum cup is touching its side. Next, activate suction in the vacuum cup located away from the side of the battery. For example, if the battery is located on the left side of the T-arm, as it is here, you should press and release the right button to activate suction in the right vacuum cup. Then, using the T-arm assembly, push the battery completely into the rack slot. Next, pull the T-arm assembly out of the battery compartment and move it to the center of the battery changer carriage. Then, move the battery changer within reach of the battery cable and plug mount and connect the discharged battery to its appropriate charger. Now move to the lift truck to place the battery into the truck. Align the battery changer compartment with the lift truck's battery compartment. Next, Raise the carriage of the battery changer so that it is slightly higher than the lead-in rollers or slide strips in the lift truck. Place the battery into the lift truck just as you placed the battery into the rack before. Remove the T-arm assembly away from the lift truck's battery compartment and move it to the center of the battery changer carriage. Once the battery change has been completed, the last step in the process is to park the battery changer in its designated location. Typically, you should park the battery changer so that it does not interfere with traffic in the truck service area. Once you reach the designated parking area, turn off the battery changer's power by pushing down on the red start-stop button located in the right-hand corner of the control panel. Then exit the operator's platform and close and latch the gate. The final step in the battery changing process is to prepare the lift truck for another shift of operation. To do this, you simply reinstall the lift truck's battery retaining plate and reconnect the lift truck's battery cable. 
To reconnect the battery cable, grasp the plastic SB connector and snap the cable securely into place. Once this is done, the lift truck is ready to go and the battery changing process is complete. When working with industrial batteries, you should always wear protective clothing, including a face shield or safety glasses, an apron and rubber gloves. Never wear metallic jewelry or have loose metallic objects such as tools that could cause a spark and possible explosion. If sulfuric acid from a battery ever gets on your skin or in your eyes, immediately go to your shower eye wash. Flush the affected area for 20 minutes and then seek proper medical attention. The single point watering system you will be using is a safe and efficient way to water your batteries. This system eliminates the drudgery of removing vent caps and watering each cell individually. It will also keep the tops of the batteries cleaner, reducing the amount of battery washing that will be required. To water your batteries, attach the female quick connect from your battery changer's watering hose to the male connector on the battery. Then turn on the water flow valve and fill the battery until the flow indicator stops spinning. When the battery is full, turn off the water flow valve and disconnect the watering hose from the battery. After filling each battery, check it for signs of damage, including worn connectors and cables and the presence of smoke or unusual odors. If any problems are detected, tag the battery and take it out of service. When the filling process for a battery is complete, Make a note in the log indicating its current operating condition and when it was watered. Your single point watering system will serve you well if you take care of it. Replace any damaged or missing parts immediately upon noticing the problem. Quarterly examinations and preventive maintenance must be performed on your watering system in order to keep it functioning properly. Using a hydrometer to test the acid strength of a battery, remove one of the battery's vent caps and place the small, thin tube at the bottom of the hydrometer down into the vent hole of the battery. Next, squeeze the top of the hydrometer and withdraw electrolyte from the battery cell until the hydrometer is filled halfway. Then, read the indicator as instructed by the hydrometer manufacturer and mark the measurement in the battery's log. If correction of the electrolyte is necessary, add acid as prescribed by the battery manufacturer. Always add acid to the water, never add water to the acid. Replace the vent cap and proceed to the next cell in the battery. After all of the battery cells have been tested, check the battery cables and connectors for any sign of damage. If any problems are detected, tag the battery and take it out of service. Make a note in the battery's log indicating its current condition. To use the Levelmatic system, available exclusively on PCE models, you will first need to start the battery changer by pulling up on the red start-stop button on the control panel. If power is being supplied to the PCE battery changer for the first time, or if main power is being reconnected after a period of shutdown, consult your owner's manual for detailed instructions. To manually move the battery changer carriage to the appropriate levels, press F3, manual, on the Levelmatic control panel. Then operate the battery changer as specified in the operation and maintenance manual. To have the battery changer carriage automatically stop at the appropriate levels, press F1, Auto Level, on the Levelmatic control panel. The control panel will then prompt you to enter the desired level. Using the Levelmatic keypad, enter the number of the desired level and press Enter. The battery changer carriage is now ready to move. Using the carriage joystick on the control panel, move the battery changer carriage toward the selected level. As the carriage approaches the desired level, its speed will decrease to allow for a smooth stop. The carriage will automatically stop once the desired level has been reached. Once the battery has been placed on the power changer carriage, 
you will be required to enter the level number of your next target area. This can be a forklift, a wash station, or another rack location. If at any time you find it necessary to switch to the manual mode, simply press F3 and enter, and the power changer will return to full operator control. A supplemental programming guide has been supplied with your power changer that details programming operation in a step-by-step -step format.